Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to get into another Frequently Asked Questions video, which means I'm going to go through three recent videos and grab one comment from each and address your questions and your concerns, whatever it is that you have to talk about. I want to get into it. I think there's probably going to be some salt because you know what? It's been a salty season with SPS low and with cards falling and the rank reward changes. People have been spicy. So if so, we'll do our best to engage with that respectfully and hopefully come away with it from you know, maybe what might be a heated conversation with maybe a new lesson or a new vision or a new uh, angle on what's happening here in Spiderlands. Let's get it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dwayne Cunningham. I go by Infidel1258. You can call me 12. Leave a comment on every video, any video, this video. I'll read them. And if I turn it into a content, I would love to send a thank you. So try to leave your IGN. I haven't looked at the comment section yet, so I'm not coming to this with foreknowledge of what we're going to talk about. I'm just going to grab three recent comments from three recent videos. Let's grab this one. Team Phoenix Rising. Publicly subscriber here. <laughs> Dwayne, how much is the team paying you to shell the game? <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, that's good. I wish they were paying me. Phoenix, I wish they were. Uh, maybe one day they will. Incidentally, they pay me through creating a game that has been around for five years. Incidentally, they pay me by giving me SPS every single day by because I play their game. Incidentally, they pay me because they, they, they allow me to generate rental revenues or sale for different assets. I earn SPS from my land. I earn SPS from my rank or my tournaments. They pay me in, a, in actually a, a, a multitude of ways, but it's all the same ways they pay you and every other person who's paying attention to this game. And for those who are spicy or salty about, you know, the trivial nature of those rewards, you know, the good news is we all have a choice to make whether or not that's enough for us to stick around or not. And for some, the answer will be no. For me, the answer is yes. How much do they pay me? They pay me three to six SPS per battle. They pay me a couple hundred SPS every day from rank rewards as well as, uh, as well as land farming. I had to set up a lot of value to, to in personal output to sort of make that possible. But now they pay me by sort of creating a mechanism which allows me to believe, and maybe not you, that those SPS that I'm receiving on a daily basis, trivial though they may be, will one day be meaningful. And if they are 10 cents, a dollar or more, I will still be holding them and that they that will mean I will have gotten paid hundreds of dollars a day really that's how i look at it and so did they pay me no and uh um, maybe one last thought they haven't paid me since splinterlands tv which is a time of my life where i did do content directly for them and i would have been like a contractor for them kind of thing so there was a season of life about a year where i did that but that was a couple years ago so anyways thanks phoenix appreciate you brother thanks for subbing for the channel thanks for the comment have a great day. Let's get two more. This looks like an easy comment uh, Comment to answer. In a recent video, I burnt a bunch of my Soulbound cards to get Glint because I want to get a title and Freedom Everywhere, Every Way, which is an awesome name, by the way. Freedom Every Way. Love it. it. Says, but what's the purpose of a title? What does it do for you? What does it gain you? Great comments or great questions. The first thing is, the soulbound cards themselves, which I don't need, the ones I burnt, I don't need. I have copies of them. I'm I'm good. So let's get that. Let's say that first. I don't need them. They were superfluous. So they didn't serve any purpose. Then I get glint. Then I can spend the glint in a multitude of ways, draws, a variety of different draws, um, or the titles. And so you might think, so like to answer your question directly. I felt I had to burn them to access Glint to get something out of those cards, which I was not going to use. And now directly, why would I want a title? Titles give you bonuses. Titles give you percent bonuses on, can I show you? Well, on your land, I don't think I have any titles on my land, but let me show you. So on any given land, 
you can have, you need to have a power core and you have whatever number of cards you want on there. You can add a Rooney and, or no, sorry, you can add a title and you can add a artifact. An artifact is a um, totem. And so the title would give me some amount of bonus. Uh, it looks like, look at this. My Legionnaire title is the only title I have access to at this moment. And it would give me a 10% bonus on this plot of land. So that is one thing that the, the title can do for you. When you go to rank battles as well, I believe it gives you a rank bonus. A recent win. Let's go ahead and skip. So this is a recent win that I performed. I got 262 glint, 5.5 SPS. This is a modern win from like yesterday or something like that. But anyways, let's see. No. There's no bonus in there. Okay. I thought titles give you a glint bonus, but they do not. Okay, so uh, maybe the only, I feel like that's wrong, but maybe the only thing I can show you is the bonus around land, which I would love to take advantage of. Some of my land produce some pretty significant resources, whether it's SPS or whatever else. And so it would be cool to have a 10% bonus on top of that. That's part of it. But finally, to answer your question, the most important consideration that I have when I look at what do they get me or what does a, what's the purpose of a title, there's scarce collectible NFTs. And I believe that they carry a certain value. Now that value is negotiable and maybe $1,000, which was the market going rate when I recorded that video, will not prove to be valid or accurate as time goes on. Or maybe it will. And there's a bit of speculation on my part that that title and its scarcity will will hold a certain value. When you ask me, what do they do? It has some functionality within providing bonuses in the game or as a bragging right when you show your name like Dwayne the Legionnaire is a title that I wear and use. It's a certain it tells anyone who plays me that I am particularly I bought a lot of Legion Legion uh, um, Chaos Legion packs. And the same would be true with those titles you see in the video. So that might not be meaningful to you or maybe to somebody else, but to me it is. And then this, the, the, um, the scarcity and the potential possibility for price increase or price liquidity from that title is what I would really be wanting, right? If it could, if I could burn those cards and then sell that for a thousand dollars, what I essentially did was sell my soul bounds, which I didn't need for a thousand. That's the way I want to answer your question. Thanks so much for the comment. Appreciate you. Freedom every way. Okay. I like Paul's comment and I'm going to not, I'm going to read it, but I'm, it's not going to count as number three because it's, we already did that video. Paul said, hold the glint until the new soulbound cards is the best play. I think, I think he's right. Although I would like to get a title, I did, wasn't able to burn 5 million glint. And so I don't believe I'm going to buy either of the other titles. So what I'm saying is I probably am going to hold them for the new Soulbound cards and I'll have a huge, you know, a lot of extra draws. If the draws themselves, if a draw costs 5,000 glint for a ma master draw, I have 1.25 million divided by 5,000 5, glint. That's 250 draws right there that I'm going to be able to pull right away. And that's assuming I use the master draw. Those are like essentially diamond or champion chest, right? That's the equivalent thereof. But, and look at the 68% chance common, 20% rare, 8% epic, 3.2% gold or legendary, and a 6% gold foil. But they're going to make better draws still, or gold foil specific draws or legendary specific draws. So those will be more expensive. But I imagine if I could just buy 250 of these today, I mean, I. I guess I could, but I'm going to wait until the new Soulbound cards come out. He's right. That's a great idea. One more comment from one more video. Man, lots of great comments in here. Lots of full, big conversation pieces, especially around Soulbound bonuses. This is my last frequently asked question video. Hmm. KGM Jam says, here's a topic you could do on a show, on a show 12. 
figure out who's buying and who's selling. Whenever I go to sell something, as long as I'm near floor price, it sells pretty quick, which means somebody has the vision that we do. This, that this game is long haul and is going to be an excellent place to be here, to be and is now. It's going to be an excellent place to be. Um, if you if you know your cards are going to market, you know what's hot and what's not. You can't you can buy low, sell high, but if you really want to do well at the game, concentrate on building equity in the game so that the bull run in the next bull run you do well. In three plus years I've been here, I could go out and work for an hour everywhere, anywhere, and make money, more money than the game could ever give me. So why would you concentrate on that? That is that has to be nine has to be true for 99% of us. Thanks for your video. Looking forward to the next one. So what I'm seeing here is just like a almost like a, a bit of a a calming voice over this moment and maybe our community. There's been a there is a lot of salt. I've seen it being thrown at the team. I heard it from town in the town hall being projected and presented to Matt. I see it here in my contact sec uh, uh, comment section. Get out while you can. How much are they paying you? Looks like we got more of it, more salt over here. People are upset because their bags are down. But then we get guys like myself, KGM Jam, Gathering the Magic, people who are here just enjoying the process and we're not gonna be shaken by lower prices. The idea that I would leave now when like there's real probability and possibility that land 2.0 would be realized that that we might actually see a major listing that crypto bull market might impact the altcoin market and therefore splinterlands tokenization what no man and kgm jam is saying that he's like this is a long haul we've been here we knew that some people get it that's why when i put cards in the marketplace they sell right away and he goes if you want to if they want to do well in this game or any blockchain based video game that rewards you for your time and attention in a trivial way, what they're going to do is understand what he's preaching right here, which is this idea of just concentrate on building equity in the game. That means playing so that you earn SPS. That means, you know, maybe playing the marketplace in a certain way that you maximize returns there. Maybe you're flipping, maybe you're renting, maybe you're whatever. Bid buys to buy low and, and then selling it into the market pressure, right? There's ways to make money, tournaments, etc., multi accounting, whatever the case may be, so that you build equity in this game. And he says across years, right? He's been here for three years and he's and he's recognizing it like I am and as many others are, that in this moment where Bitcoin's sixty seven thousand has been above seventy thousand, it looks like altcoins are going to have a real moon mission. And I believe Forget about fundamentals. Forget about new player experience. Altcoins can run without them. With that, and there, and I actually believe SPS could drive, could wag, could be the tail that wags a dog. You know what I mean? It's like, should we get the game in the right place? Should we get you know new player experience in the right place? That would drive player adoption, which would drive token prices. True, but it's also possible that things just get crazy with the tokens. And that drives player adoption. That's not optimal. And I don't, I'm not truly wishing for that. I want sustainable growth, but I'm just saying this is a special moment and I'm not concerned. I'm excited and I'm acquiring just like guys like this, just like the ones who are buying off the market as much as I possibly can. I am and when we see comments over here, like bro, get out while well, you can, you had a de you, you can still recoup a decent chunk of change. Splinterlands is game over. I mean, I wish you luck, Crypto Dad. You know, truly, I love that you you can make that call. I really do think that's why Splinter Guns is special because people like yourself can can make that call and just walk away and actually retain some sort of value, even if it is lower than what maybe you put in. But to me, this is not a time to sell. If I had value on the side, it would be a time to buy. And for me right now, it's sit tight and watch and wait. Thank you so much to everybody for the comments and I support, uh, I just appreciate it. Even, the, you know, some of you who are frustrated or disappointed or even maybe 
angry. Maybe maybe it was a bit of this couple of tones. Thank you. Thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for dropping the comments. I appreciate it. Sincerely, have an amazing day. God bless.